It's a family drama with monsters. Good day and welcome back to Spartan Entertainment and Electronics. I'm your host Ryan and we're back with another smash hit or trash flick review. This time we're going to have a look at the Netflix adaptation of The Witcher. The story is derived from the novel series known as The Witcher Saga penned by Polish author Andrzej Sapkowski. Visual depiction of the series has taken its direction from the video games of the same name developed by CD Projekt Red. The Witcher world has a medieval time setting with several kingdoms all based on the continent. The stories take place in a place called the continent. The continent is divided into a lot of kingdoms, but primarily we'll deal with what we call the north and the south. There's standard political contesting known of the time, usurpers and military conquest. If you like the series Game of Thrones or Vikings, or movies like King Arthur, the one with Keira Knightley, then the series is probably going to hold your interest. It features mutant humans known as witchers that have developed into monster hunters over the centuries. There's a balance within this world featuring monsters and mythical creatures like dragons, as well as the use of magic and destiny to establish fantasy territory while still staying relatable. Netflix has produced one season to date, containing eight episodes, all right around 60 minutes in duration. Released December 20th, 2019 to the streaming service and boasting a budget of approximately 80 million US dollars for the first season. Season two has been confirmed, although an official release date has not been announced other than sometime 2021. Before we get rolling into this review, if you're new to the channel, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button and the bell to turn on notifications. I post new videos at least once a week, if not more often, and would love to have you around to see them. If you like this video at the end, please give it the thumbs up button and show it some love. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram, and links to both of those are in the description. Produced by Lauren Schmidt Hisdrich, who produced and wrote other Netflix franchises such as Daredevil and Defenders, she's no stranger to making works of art revolving around superheroes, comic book, or other fictional characters. For this series, Lauren has operated as a producer, writer, and creator. Casting selections include Henry Cavill, best known for his portrayal of DC Entertainment Universe's Superman, playing Geralt of Rivia. Freya Allen in her first leading role as Princess Ciri, Anya Chalotra from Wanderlust and the ABC Murders as Yennefer of Vengerberg, and Joey Beatty also in his first major role as my favorite bard, Yaskir. Do not tell me that this is finally the moment you've decided to actually care about someone other than yourself. Don't touch Roche. Honestly, I don't think they could have picked a better cast, especially Henry Cavill, as for what I know of the Witcher games and from what I have heard from people more familiar with this universe, he embodies that character perfectly. Seems like a good time to point out that I haven't played the games at length or read the stories, so this series is my first full experience with the Witcher franchise. Ciri, Yennefer, and Yaskir were also well-rounded characters that were very well portrayed by their respective actors. Mm -hmm. Lauren did a fantastic job guiding the development of the characters between the various episode writers, to which there was six. There are some areas that seem to require a pre-existing knowledge of the universe and lore around the story content, which resulted in some things not making sense to me. At the same time, the characters were well introduced so that someone like me who is new to this world can understand and connect with them fairly quickly. I've heard tales of your kind, Witcher. <laughs> You're a mutant, created by magic. If you are new to this universe, check out the trailers and more section before jumping in. It offers some additional content to help bring you up to the speed with the world and the lore. I didn't see this content until after watching the first season, which was fine, but it would have been nice to go into the first season armed with that little bit of extra knowledge. With little to no pre-existing knowledge, I was well enough up to speed and informed by the end of the third episode to mostly understand the current state of affairs as it pertains to this series. I appreciated the surprise in episode 3 when I realized there are multiple timelines going on. I hadn't figured that out to this point, and when it was more clearly revealed, plot points started to click in and everything going on made so much more sense. I think this was really well handled and added an extra element to the series that made me want to keep watching. The plot had a very smooth and even flow to it, maintaining excellent pacing and a balance between humor and serious moments, and between action, lighthearted, and major plot points. My main gripe about the story is that it would have been nice to see more monsters and battles with them. There were a couple, but there was definitely room for more to be slayed and coin to be made from the townsfolk. 
I didn't miss having more monsters, but it would have been a nice add to the season, even if it meant one or two more episodes. Although that would have required more budget of approximately 18 million US dollars, I think a couple more episodes would not be a bad thing, especially if it meant more monster battles. I can't do this without you. No matter what you choose. By the end of season one, I was questioning Yennefer's role other than to be Geralt's love interest. They spent a large chunk of time developing this character to really do very little with her by the end of the season. I think this needs to be addressed going into season two. Because they developed Yennefer as much as they did, I am invested into the character and want to see how she fits into the larger narrative being told. Or they need to make her less of a focal point and reduce her presence. I suppose one could go read the books to find out. I, however, will wait for season two. For now. Yennefer, imagine the most powerful woman in the world. Do you have what it takes? It was interesting to watch how Destiny intertwined and guided the main characters, slowly guiding them all to one climactic conclusion. Unfortunately, one character was missing from that climax, much to my dismay. This character's time in this season also came to an abrupt and sudden ending. I am hoping this is addressed in season two because I don't think they deserve to be left how they were. In the interest of avoiding spoilers, I won't reveal what character I am referencing. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this series yet, stay out of the comments for now. If you have seen the series, let's discuss in the comments what you thought of how this character was written out, what you think of how they handled the other character's development, how familiar are you with the Witcher world? It is a place of great riches and great power, but also a place of great violence and great suffering. Most of the smaller details were well handled visually. I say most because one oversight was the use of contact lenses for Siri and Yennefer. Because the contacts don't show pupil dilation or reactivity, it made them feel almost soulless or cold as their eyes rarely reacted to what was going on around them. It's a small detail, but there were a couple of times it made a big impact. I didn't notice this at first, but after my girlfriend pointed it out to me, I couldn't unsee it. That's really all I have to say about this series. The story was excellent, it was linear, even though it actually wasn't, and did a fantastic job developing all of the main characters, even though it didn't use some of them to their full potential. A couple of oversights and a couple of things to work on for season two, but I think Lauren has done a fantastic job with the direction of the series and its early development. As an added bonus, it's nice to finally understand all of the memes based from this series. The Witcher from Netflix is 100% a smash hit, and I give it a 9 out of 10. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this series. What other programs are you watching on Netflix? And I'm curious, do you still have cable, or are you exclusively using streaming services? Let's discuss. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.